Well, coming into the game, we didn't know how to take Edison. I told the kids, I said, I know they can shoot very well. Uh, I said, what we got to do is just keep them out the paint. If they don't get any paint points, that we'd probably end up winning the ball game. And we had to play experts because we had foul trouble early. Clinton went to the bench in the first quarter, came back in the third, picked up third and fourth. So we had to play a little under man today, but uh, our two young kids played very well in a big game like this here. Coach, what can you say about uh, uh, your defense early? It seemed like you kind of wanted to ease off the pressure. Were you just kind of waiting to see what they would show you? Uh, yeah, because in the locker room I said, I don't know what defense they're going to come out in. They're usually a man-to-man -man team, and basically that's what they played. They played a little bit of matchup. So we just stayed at our matchup defense. And so we didn't change defenses not too much during the game today. So usually we were man-to-man, -man, but we were under man the whole year with injuries. We had more injuries this year than I probably had the last 10 years in one season. So I just take my head off to my kids who play so hard. And Edison's a very good basketball team. It's most of you know very, shoot the ball very well. But I thought at the end of the day, we had played better competition along the way. And it made us the top dog today. Well, Hobby, that second quarter was big for you. What was working for you especially in the second quarter? Um, I think remaining aggressive, you know, making sure that you hit open shots and just taking care of the ball. Um, making sure, you know, no easy turnovers, playing good straight up defense and less foul. Brianna, all day you were kind of in the paint today, so what did you see today that you were able to take advantage of? Um, they kept leaving me one on one, usually I'm double teamed, but we spread the court so that either Paul or myself is close us. And for each of you girls, uh, going out with four titles, to end your senior career, what is that like, and how do you how do you look back on your PA career? Um, you know, I'm going to look at it in a very bright way, um, making history. You know, not only for girls basketball, but, um, being the only team in the state to have six for boys basketball as well. Um, you know, it's just, it means a lot to me. You know, making, being part of this legacy. It means a lot to me too. Um, I came over in junior year, not knowing how I could gel into the team, because those are definitely helping me out, put me in my spot. And I'm just glad to have. Some <laughs> Coach, what can you say about each of these girls and how you've seen this girl develop in the time? Oh, man. When she came in the ninth grade, I, I said, this kid ain't going to make it. This kid ain't going to make it, you know. But her dad was a great basketball player, as we all know. And I knew she had the roots. And she would play with the right type of kids that would push her. She didn't want to be left back, you know. And so right now, she's probably one of the better players in the state, I would say. Brianna. Brianna is just Brianna. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> really helps us when we really need help in the paint. You know, I, I'm going to miss her a lot. You know, uh, she, she she rebounds for us. She sometimes she even leads the break, which she didn't know how to do when she came with us. But I tell my kids, if you can learn how to rebound, you got to learn how to come out with it nowadays. Because you go to college. Kids your size are going to come out with it, so you got to come out. She's done well there. She shoots the ball with a half percentage around the rim. Of course, she missed a few today, but what kid is not going to miss a few? So you got to get some and take some. And I'm just so glad she was here for us today, for the last two years. I know you said all the teams are special, but can you pinpoint something that makes this specific team unique? It, it, the unique part is I let them do all the injuries we had this year. People just don't know how many injuries we had this year where kids just could not play. Miss, oh, so many. One night we had three starters, and we just threw people on the bench and said, let's play. And they all learned now. So I expect us to be very deep next year, however, but because we got so many people injured. But we'll, we'll make our way. We always do. We'll find a way to win. And that's what the trick is. You got to find a way to win. You have to have parents who are willing to buy into what you are selling their kids, okay? Kids don't want to buy into hard work. Most of us know the new generation doesn't want to work hard. But I can't say that about my kids. My kids work hard, run miles, roll tires. They do it all just to get stronger. And, and I appreciate it. Uh, for Brianna and Mahogany, do you have a favorite story or memory that you'll that you take with you for the rest of your life from the same basketball? Um, honestly, for me, it'd be just winning my first state title. You know, back freshman year, it's kind of starting the tempo. Um, we had just hit winning um, three state titles in a row. And so just keeping that and continuing the streak, that's, I guess, that'd be my favorite memory. Um, probably senior night when they pranked us, they threw water on us, and decorated our car <laughs> in a very special way. <laughs> but that's probably my favorite memory. 
Uh, Coach, do you have a specific memory that will remain fond of you for this season? No, I can't say it, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I really don't because there's just so many memories that I have with these kids, you know. I probably gave this team more days off from practice than any other team. That's the part I don't like, but I will remember it. You know, because we didn't have anybody in practice, so we just have shoot around. Because we just had everybody go down to the train up, to our, the whole team in the training room. So, so that's the way that goes. It's the ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Coach, Coach John, we all know you from Hampton Roads. We know you work hard for your kids getting into college. As you put on your rings before the buzzer, what was going through your mind as you addressed Princeton Nation in the crowd before the buzzer went off. I got to get another one next year. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I said, now next year, I got to be here right here, though. It's going to break a tradition. And I often wonder what's going to happen when the tradition breaks. I already know, but I'll let you guys wonder about that. I think most people here know what's going to happen. <laughs>